Hi, you're watching the good, bad and ugly fungi of Australia. This YouTube presentation is to further educate people of the amazing understudied world of fungi in Australia. This edition will focus on the saffron milk cap or Lactarius deliciosus. This presentation would not be possible without the support of the Sydney Fungal Studies Group or the iPhone app called iFungi AU. My name is Greg Cook. Uh, there's a photo of me up in that right hand corner and uh, I'm a member of the uh, Sydney Fungal Studies Group and Fungi Map and I'm also the administrator of the data for the iFungi AU Australian Fungi Identification iPhone app. That's a mouthful. Um, I one day hope to find the time to get this app into Android format, but at this stage um, I just don't have the time. Uh, incidentally, I live in Swan Hill in Victoria, in Australia, and uh, am quite passionate about mushrooms and all things fungi. If you look at the Lacteria species list in Australia, there's lots of natives down the left hand side. And uh, today we're, we're looking at the introduced species, Lacteria deliciosa. As you can see, um, all Lacteria ooze a milky sap when it's cut. Their spore print is either white or creamy orange and all seem to have a relationship with the roots of trees that they're growing under. It is thought that both the tree and the Lactarius gain benefit from this relationship and uh, scientists refer to this relationship as being ectomycorrhizal. Okay, so to be more specific about Lactarius deliciosa, uh, they're really easy to identify. They can grow to about 20 centimetres across, but more commonly around the 10 centimetre mark. Uh, from my experience, the ones that are 5 to 8 centimetres are the best ones to collect, as they seem to be the most tasty for the table. They start off being that classic domed mushroom shape and gradually become slightly funnel shaped with age. The cap consists of zoned rings of shades of orange and this zoning also fades with age. The stem is mottled orange blotches and the gills are a light yellow orange colour. When the gills or the cap get bruised or they get old, they develop patches of green. These are best avoided for collecting and cooking as they just don't look that good on the plate. The most distinguishing features uh, in relation to Lactarius deliciosus and all Lactarius species is uh, the sap that oozes when it's cut or bruised. Um, you can see here on this picture, well it's very hard to see but um, I've run a pen knife across the gills and there's little droplets of a saffron or orange sap that is oozing from that wound. Uh, the same would occur if you did the same thing to the cap. Um, Lactarius deliciosa are probably introduced to Australia on the roots of Pinus radiata when they introduced them in the pioneering days. They are found grouped or scattered amongst the pine needles in established pine plantations and uh, also can be found under established conifers, spruces or other species of pine and uh, that have been brought to Australia from Europe in the early days. In terms of edibility, um, they appear in abundance in pine plantations each autumn and they're highly sought after, particularly amongst the Russian community who salt and preserve them for their long winters. The orange sap is bitter if eaten raw, so it's better to cook them beforehand. They don't have that strong mushroomy flavour that you would normally expect from other mushrooms 
and it is one of the few mushrooms that my kids will eat as they just don't have that strong flavour that often kids don't like. They also remain firm after cooking, so work really well in a slow cooked casserole or in a quick stir fry. Um, but honestly, my favourite way of preparing them is with a little bit of butter and garlic and uh, pour in some cream at the end and it just makes a magic sauce poured over chicken breasts or whatever whatever takes your fancy. Um, I hope you've uh, now got a better understanding of the saffron milk cap and uh, hopefully you um, will uh, enjoy collecting them in the bush. Okay, bye now.